Good afternoon. Happy Sunday. Happy April. Happy everything. Happy life. So what we try to help you create here is a happy life. A life that um, fulfills your dreams and incites your vision and brings you closer to an understanding of the powerful spiritual power that is within you and how to use it. Today is kind of one of those how to use it days by the time I get around to talking about what I'm going to talk about. It really is uh, about how to enlist the power within you to create a better life, a sweeter life, a, a happier life. So um, welcome to our Sunday session. We're also here on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock, and uh, we welcome you to just drop on in and say hi. Good morning, Brenda. Good afternoon, Brenda. Now, see, I just said afternoon. I knew it was afternoon, and there I go. There I go. Um, I just can't seem to keep track of time very well. Good Sunday, Brenda. Happy that, that you're here. Uh, what's going on in your life? Good morning, Heidi. My goodness. Everybody's going to show up at once. Um, and I just said good morning again, didn't I? Oh, there is little hope that I will get that straightened out. However, there's lots of hope that better things will happen, so we can live with that. Hello, Kirk. Glad that you're here. Good morning and good afternoon. Thank you. <laughs> we can do both. Let's. Let's. It's still morning someplace in the world, isn't it? In Hawaii, it's still morning. Um, I don't know how much farther that goes. I've never been real good at time geography. Um, but it's technically afternoon here, so good afternoon, everyone, and, and I'm really, really glad that you're here. How is everyone today? What's going on in your life? Talk to me. Um, what could you use prayer support for? What is prayer working for in your life? Um, catch me up. I haven't talked to most of you since Wednesday. <laughs> and all kinds of things can happen. So, uh, so let me know. Let me know what's going on. How's your life going? <laughs> Heidi, I like your world. It's still morning until 2 p.m. That's good. Two's a good cut off. By then, it's getting warmer and the day is moving on and, and you kind of have to catch up. But uh, that's good. That works for me. I have no problem with that. <laughs> Talk to me, people. What is going on in your lives? How are you uh, fending? Are you vaccining? Are you, um, what are you doing? Kirk's enjoying a lazy Sunday afternoon with the missus. Oh, we love her. We love her. Lazy Sunday afternoon. All three minutes of the afternoon. Yay. I hope it started early for you. I hope it's just been kind of a laid back, fun sort of day. Those are good. We all need those in our lives, don't we? Just a, a laid back, not a whole lot I have to do kind of day. I know I, I make to-do lists and uh, I scare myself sometimes. I get the list all done and I look at it and I go, what? Um, so, oh, definitely prayer work for Kathy. I know how she feels. God, we put down so many pets last year. It was just heartbreaking. So absolutely, Kathy, Mackenzie. Got it. Got it. For those of you who have been praying for... Jerry Hempstead, who is um, my daughter's father-in-law, Christopher's father. Uh, he passed yesterday morning. I can't believe how quickly that went. Um, 
we were just informed like two weeks ago that he was ill. So I suppose we would all, you know, there's something to be said for that, not hanging around, not being in pain, um, just sliding into the next experience. Jerry was a wonderful, wonderful, sweet man, a fabulous grandfather. Um, I saw him last probably a year or so ago, and, uh, and he looked wonderful. He's got a fairly new wife um, who he leaves behind, and, and my heart is with Sue, if you'd like to put Sue and the family in your prayers just for a peace of mind, that would be lovely. Um, but Jerry has moved on. great man. The world is, is a poorer place for his passing. Hey, Jennifer. Glad that, that you are here. I hear you guys are having a laid back kind of day. And, uh, and good for you. Okay, Brenda, then you will be thoroughly inoculated. No, Heidi, it's never easy. It was it was time for all of ours, too, but mm, it's never easy. It's never easy. You love them. They're, they're your kids, you know. Just because they've got four legs and a tail doesn't make them any less your children. And uh, my heart goes out to, to Kathy, and, and please tell her that we're praying for her. And prayers for Jerry. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Kirk. Oh, you're all wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. And I think uh, Chrissy especially will, will appreciate that. Christopher's already on a plane to go back. Um, he had scheduled the trip so he could spend some time with his father. And things just moved faster than anybody anticipated. So, uh, there we go. But thank you for those of you who were praying. I believe it made his transition easier. And, um, and I don't think he suffered a great deal. And aren't we grateful for that? Always. Always. So, my darlings, how are all of you today? Talk to me. Talk to me. What's going on in your lives what uh, what can we support in prayer what can I know for you what exciting things are happening fill me in fill me in I need to know this stuff <laughs> Heidi um, you know, I had some problems when I was coming in on Internet Explorer and when I was trying to go out on Internet Explorer. And someone suggested switching to Firefox. I don't use it for anything else, but I use it for this. And it seems to work pretty well. So maybe that would help. I don't know. <clears throat> Jennifer, you use the word grace a lot, and I love it. Thank you for doing that. It's just, it's a wonderful word, isn't it? It just evokes all kinds of grace, gentleness, kindness, um, good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, Heidi's gonna, gonna try that, see Firefox works any better. It certainly does for broadcasting. Well, narrow casting. Whatever it is we're doing. Um, I was having trouble for several weeks getting in without getting tossed out. And, um, and I don't remember, I wish I did, who said, try Firefox. It holds up better. And, um, and I did, and it does. At least for this end of it. So hopefully it will, uh, 
it will work as well for you. I won't say what the, I remember. Isn't it funny? I can remember the conversation. Someone saying that 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 Internet Explorer has not been changed in a lot of years, and that it is just not the top of the line as it was for a very long time. That uh, the other ones have kept up better with the technology, and um, and certainly our experience here has been that it's better. Now, I have to laugh because when when we're done with our hour, um, if I go back to my page to send the talk over to YouTube and, um, and to send it to the relevant spirituality page, it's not there yet on my page. So I go out and I go back into Internet Explorer, and there it is. Um, so I don't know. I don't just don't I don't I I think it's a miracle that it ever works at all so I'm I'm happy okay Heidi's gonna come back in on Firefox let's see how that works yay if it does we've all learned something haven't we I think we have so I'm still I'm gonna ask one more time I'll probably ask more than one more time. But I'm going to ask one more time right now. How is everybody? Prayer support? Um, how's it going? What do we need to know to support you in prayer? Um, just let me know. Let me know. Put it in the little chat box and let me know. things better. Make things better. Make your life better so that you can go out and make the world a better place. Works that way, you know. I don't think there's any such thing as as a selfish prayer if in fact it makes your life better because when your life is better, you tend to do better things in the world. When you're happy, you want to share it. A lot of people when they're miserable want to share it, but that's not recommended. That doesn't serve anybody. Um, Okie dokie. What else do I want to say to you before I get into what I want to say to you? Oh, I'm kind of waiting to see if Heidi is back. It, Heidi, are you back? <laughs> are you here? I don't want to start without her. She might have had to install Firefox. Oh, she might have had to. So, we can wait a minute more while the rest of you tell me what I can be praying for. What's going on in your life? Yeah. It is grace and peace, too. It takes both, doesn't it, Jennifer? When we're grieving. The, the peace comes, I think, from within, but the grace is... You can live in grace, you can practice grace, but I think when you're grieving, grace blesses you. It's like it comes from the words and the actions of others, the... Uh, The sense that something bigger than we are, greater than we are, um, more powerful than we are when we're feeling less powerful, is present and is, for lack of a better set of words, looking out for us. Absolutely, Jen. Absolutely. Hold on a minute now. Let me. Okay. Yeah, there are times. 
times when all that we know um, is capable of lifting us, but sometimes we don't feel like that. Um, and it's it's nice to know there's more that we can call upon. And we are absolutely, I think, that for each other as well. That extra something that we can call upon, that, um, that sense of being lifted in, in love and in peace and grace. Indeed, Jennifer, all of that. All of that. For ourselves, for others. Funny sometimes, isn't it? It's easier to give it to others than it is to give it to ourselves. And I don't always think it's because we think we don't deserve it. I mean, sometimes there's probably an element of that, but I think also it's we don't think to give it to ourselves or know how. Hmm. Let's think on that. Let's think on that. Grace. Now I want to talk about grace. Maybe I will Wednesday. <sighs> Grace and peace for us all. For us all. To get us through the, the sad times, the grieving times, the hard times. Yeah. Okay. So, Grace and peace for everybody. We can all use it, can't we? So, well, I suppose I should get on with talking about what I was going to talk about. Do you think? I'm looking to see what time it is. Yeah, I probably should do that. And, um, we'll know that Heidi's going to join us if she's not already here. She may already be here. I don't like not being able to see you guys. It just it frustrates me not to be able to see you. Then I would know things and not have to be guessing at them. But uh, we'll guess for right now because that's all the information I've got. So let me entertain you, as the song goes. I want to talk to you today um, about magic. Magic. In my experience, what most of us would really like to have in our lives is a little magic. I'm not talking about stage magic. Though I might, in a little bit. But what I'm talking about is, is a little, or a lot, of the kind of magical stuff that looks like a miracle just happened. You know, the kind of magic that, that, with the wave of her fairy godmother's wand, turned Cinderella's miserable little life into a fabulous experience, complete with a partner, a palace, and a parking space for her carriage. Isn't that what so many people are, are looking for, at least in the beginning? Partners, palaces, and parking spaces. And then when all that kind of falls into place, we start looking for something greater, deeper, something beyond that. And that, that is where the real magic comes in. The fairy tales tell us that all you need is a magic wand and the right words. And then magic occurs. We've all seen, fan seen Fantasia, yes? So, uh, the movie people, not the singer. So we've all known the story of the Sorcerer's Apprentice. And we know 
if we were paying any attention at all, that a wand in the wrong hands, a wand without the right words, can get you into a heap of trouble. I have to confess, I've got a wand or two. Okay, so I've got a wand collection. I've collected them for, for years. I love, I love my wand. But I have yet to really do anything out of the ordinary with any of them. So, sadly, I, I'm partially convinced it isn't just about the wand. Though, I've just been gifted with a new one. And I haven't really had the chance to try it out yet. Isn't it beautiful? Just the right size for me. But what I do know, as much as I love my wand, is that the wand alone and just waving it in the air, as much as I love that process, and I do, isn't going to do much more than intimidate anybody who happens to be passing by or is standing within wand range of me. Waving it around isn't enough. So if it isn't just waving the wand, then it must be about the words that one uses while wielding the wand. I'm on a mission to find the right words. And I'd like you all to help me. I'd like to test the words out on my wand and find out which ones really work. Come on. Give a girl a hand. Um, say some magic words for me. Abracadabra, hocus pocus. Yeah, okay. All right, there's, there's some good ones. Let me grab on to Abracadabra for a minute. Because I know the history of it. Abracadabra may actually be an ancient Hebrew phase, meaning I create what I speak. Mm -hmm. What we know for sure is that Abracadabra was first recorded in a Latin medical poem, De Medi oh, Medic Medicina Precepta. Precepta. Precepta by the Roman physician Quintus Serenus Sam Samonicus. Oh, please couldn't they have had simpler names? Second century AD. It's believed to have come into English via French and Latin from a Greek word, abracadabra. The change from S to C seems to have been through a confused transliteration of the Greek. Serenus Simonicus, if I say it enough times, I may actually get it right, said that to get well, a sick person should wear an amulet around their neck, a piece of parchment inscribed with a triangular formula derived from the word abracadabra, which acts like a funnel to drive the sickness out of the body. Abracadabra, abracadabra, abracadabra. Abra, 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 like that. Like that. Okay? So just whip one of those right up. However, it seems likely that abracadabra may be even actually older than that because it derives from one of the Semitic languages though nobody can say for sure, because there's no written record before Serenus Simonicus. There are some theories. It's from the Aramaic phrase, avra kedabra, meaning I will create as I speak. Some think the source is the three Hebrew words, ab, father, ben, son, and rosh, 
Akadosh, Holy Spirit. I probably pronounced all of that wrong. Or it might have originated with a Gnostic sect in Alexandria called the Basilidians and was probably based on Abrasax, the name of their supreme deity, Abrasax in Latin sources. Or the word may also be derived from the Hebrew ha-raka, meaning the blessing or the sacred name. The abracadabra parchment is a kind of ceremonial magic, a very broad term used to encompass a wide variety of rituals, which often include necessary accessories to aid the worker of magic. Okay, enough with abracadabra for a minute. I'll be back to it. Let's try another word. Hocus, pocus. Meaning, meaningless talk, chatter, or activity. Typically designed to trick someone or conceal the truth of a situation. Hence, the magician uses the wand to point the people in the opposite direction while doing something over here. That will stop in a minute. Hocus pocus. Oh dear. Chatter, chatter, chatter. Hang on. There. Okay, some say the phrase hocus pocus originated in the early 17th century from Hax Pax Max Deus Adamax. That one I know I could say. Incidentally, the only word in that entire phrase that is really translatable is deus, which means God. Some feel that the word is a corruption of a Latin phrase used in the Mass, which is entirely possible. Others say that it was a reference to the Norse folktale, Sorcerer, Ocus, Bocus. Maybe. Or it may simply be imitation Latin with no meaning, simply made up to impress people. I tend to go with that. So let's try another one. How about Sim Salabim? Magic words made popular by Dante, a Danish-born magician um, in the 1800s, who became one of the most successful stage magicians in the world. See, I told you I'd talk about stage magic at some point. His show was named Sim Salabim, and so he used the phrase freely when performing so that they would get the idea of the name of the show in their heads. Actually, Sim Salabim was a magical phrase taken from a popular Danish fairy tale. Okay, let's go with one more. Presto, change -o. I like it. It was used originally as a magician's command, and it suggests a sudden transformation as a magic trick in which one object appears to be suddenly transformed into another. The words are easily translatable if you drop the O at the end. Presto, change. Hmm? Presto being quick, change-o being change. Magic is considered to be one of the oldest, if not exactly one of the most honorable professions. However, the first priests were probably magicians, and they were also the first scientists. Tribal shamans claimed supernatural powers to help their chiefs control the people and enhance their own power. To maintain credibility, these claims were buttressed by marvelous feats. So we can imagine that they, like magicians of today, incorporated a good deal of natural science to fool their unsophisticated audiences. The earliest named magician in history is thought to be Dedi, D-E-D-I, Dedi an Egyptian conjurer whose marvelous feats were written about in the West Car Papyrus, which contained five stories about miracles performed by priests and magicians. The papyrus dates Dedi to around 2600 BC and has him performing for the pharaoh Cheops, who is generally accepted as having the one, being the one who built the Great Pyramid of Giza. Dedi apparently specialized in decapitation restoration tricks, such as cutting the head off a goose and then restoring it 
leaving the goose alive, and, well, I have no idea how he did that. There's no record of his trying the trick on a living person, but even if it was just a goose, it's a pretty cool trick, resurrecting the dead or bringing life back to that which seems to have lost its promise. I'd love to know how he did it. But I do know this. He probably wasn't the first, and he certainly wasn't the last, to pull the trick off. A few thousand years later, for the most part, Jesus did the same thing, resurrected the dead, and he too was accused of being a magician. In 1978, Morton Smith wrote a book called Jesus the Magician, which explores the whole idea of perhaps that's what Jesus was. But magician or savior, we do know what words he is supposed to have used. Standing outside the tomb, he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they might know you sent me. And then Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The several days dead man came out, his hands and feet still wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. And Jesus said to the others, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Lazarus came out. Jesus' command was not a polite little inquiry, not a if you aren't too dead or if you aren't otherwise occupied, just come out. A command or a conjuring. You got to know there were a lot of people in that crowd who were certain that he had just worked some kind of magic. And in fact, when the word got back to town about what he had done, the plan started to form in some minds to do away with him. Well, and we know how that story ends. It's a great story, the story of Lazarus, as were the stories in the papyrus about Deddy. But today I'm more interested in your story than those old tales, because this I know. There really are magic words. Really are words that can change everything. Words that can bring life back into that which seems to be dead and gone. Words that can revitalize, words that can re-energize, words that can transform. And there are words that can immobilize, words that can confuse, words that can kill everything from the life within a person to the life within their dreams. Here's what I know. We can use our words to animate, to heal, to banish fear, to create, to transform. Or we can use our words to deaden, to disease, to destroy. So let's go back to where we start. Abracadabra. Since that may actually be a phrase meaning, I create what I speak. I'm sure there must be other magic words that one can use. But since this is one that Jesus probably knew, and since it has far greater meaning than the current thought might get it, give it, let's consider it. If we go back to Jesus and Lazarus, Jesus did not plead or beg or try to bargain either with Lazarus or with the infinite. He simply spoke and expected his words to be demonstrated. No pretty pleas, no if I've behaved properly. In fact, he hadn't actually. He waited three days to go to Lazarus. And some of his friends were pretty vocal in their disapproval. He could, we are told, even have reached Lazarus before he died. But he didn't go to a friend. And when he finally got word of the death, he stalled. 
I think he really wanted to make the point that his friend was really, truly dead, dead. And then he spoke some rather interesting words directly to God when he finally got there. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you hear me always. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they might know you sent me. He knew who, what, sent him. And he knew how it worked. And the magic is pretty simple. Acknowledge a greater presence. Understand who or what is working through you. That you are not just doing it alone. He even said, I have my, I am myself can do nothing. It is the Father within me that doeth the work. So acknowledge the power that is working through you and then speak your word. Make your command. And know that abracadabra, you create what you speak. For better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, you create what you speak. You create what you speak. It isn't magic, it's the way of things. It's the way creation works in you. And it doesn't matter if you're speaking it aloud Jesus said, that's for other people's benefit. I know I don't need to do that. What matters is what you are speaking to yourself. That's the most powerful speaking of all. The small talk, the mind chatter, that's creative. That's what you are saying to creation. And creation in its one word vocabulary responds by saying yes. It said yes to Jesus. It says yes to you, whatever you say to it. So it seems to me that the responsibility ultimately is yours. If you aren't getting the same kind of results, if you aren't healing or renewing or prospering, what are you saying to creation? Abra Kadabra, you create what you speak. It's not a new idea. It's not new thought. It's not new age. It's ancient. Abra Kadabra. It's a powerful word. It's a powerful reminder that we must stay faithful. We must remember the creative power of our words. Abra Kadabra. I create what I speak. We have to remember that. We have to remember that when we are complaining about our lives and the world around us, we have to remember that when we are claiming sickness or victimization or lack or limitation of any kind. We have to remember that when we are creating us and them rather than we. We have to remember that when we are giving away our power to outside authorities, or even to inanim inanimate objects. We have to remember our lives depend upon it. I want each of you to have a reminder based on the work of Serenus Simonicus, who said that to get well, a person should wear an amulet around the neck, a piece of parchment inscribed with a triangular formula derived from the word which acts like a funnel to drive the sickness out of the body. Can you see that? If every time we, see, we say abracadabra, if we use that as a trigger to remind ourselves that what we say creates our reality, we might just change what we're talking. I have a JPEG of this, and when we are done today, I will post it on my site, and you can download it. 
I suspect that if you download that and print it on parchment paper, you might have some pretty good results. Or use it while you're waving your magic wand and see what happens. I invite you to take a minute right now and ask yourself a few questions. What have I been saying? What have I been saying to my family, to my, to my friends, to my co-workers, to the world, to myself, to creation? What stories have I been telling that have cut me off from the magic of creation? What mind chatter, what hocus pocus, what words of destruction have dissipated the miracles in my life? Today I refocus. Today, I remember that God hears me, always hears me, and that it proclaims in the words older than time, abracadabra, I create what I speak. Remember that. I create what I speak today, tomorrow, and always. And so it is. Abra Kadabra. Magic words. He says, at this point, I'm happy with a parking spot. Not enough. Not enough. You are a magnificent being. You deserve more than a good parking spot. Get out that wand. Well, what you think, Heidi? Is it magic? I think it looks like magic. And I believe that what it is is pure, direct, clear communication, connection with creation. Whatever tools you use. Hmm? Use what works. Folks, use what works. Yeah, absolutely. It is about clear communication. And if we're just, you know, waving a wand around or our thoughts around, going, I'd rather have that. I'd like to have that. I wish this wasn't here. If we're just doing that. You know, then we're the sorcerer's apprentice and we don't know the words and, and we're misusing the wand. And you know how that story ends. It's a colossal mess. Who wants to live in a colossal mess? Good girl, Heidi. Claim more. I create what I speak. Abracadabra. Abracadabra. Yes, Kirk, yes. The magic is as limitless as our imagination and belief. So why limit it? Hmm? Now, if you just like to have a little flourish with it, you want to have the magic wand while you're doing the magic, terrific. Lazarus, come out. And he did. Darn it, he did. Lots of people saw it. Wow. I always...
always thought that that kind of took a little of the shine off of the same thing when Jesus did the same thing a little bit later. But, you know, what do I know? It's a good act. You can repeat it. Come out! What do you want in your life? What would make you happy, more powerful, more excited about life, more involved in life in good ways? In good ways. Not just busier. None of us needs to be busier. But happier. Happier. What would make you happy? Hmm? I create what I speak. If you say it's too big, if you say I can't have it, if you can say yes, you create what you say. Abracadabra. I'd like you all, for just a moment, to imagine that there's a little me sitting right on your shoulder. Got me there? Be careful with me now, I might fall. Okay, got me right on your shoulder. You can pick a shoulder, doesn't matter. It's one that's most comfortable. I won't, down to that size, I don't weigh very much. You don't want all of me sitting on your shoulder. You see the little tiny me? sitting on your shoulder. Okay, you got me there? Now imagine that I am a messenger between you and creation and that my job is to keep you focused. I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. And so every time you claim something for yourself, I'm going to say, Abracadabra. And you get to be instantly reminded that what you just claimed is creative and is going to create that in your life. You're going to take it back. You're going to repeat it. See, if it's good, go ahead and repeat it. I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wise. Say that as many times as you want. Yay, good for you, as long as you believe it. I create what I speak. So I'm sitting on your shoulder, and I will abracadabra you into a better life, whether you want it or not. That's my job. Because I'll just repeat that to the infinite. Actually, I don't even have to. You've already done it. But that's just to remind you. See, I'm there to remind you to be real certain that you want what you're claiming. Okay, so I'm just a, I'm a middleman at that stage. Not that you need one. But should you? Or should it be helpful? Keep me there. You can keep me there as long as you want. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer patted my head. Thank you. That was very sweet. Okay, so there I am. Feel free to uh, claim whatever you want. Just know that I'm going to say abracadabra. Little mini me is going to say abracadabra. Not because there's magic in that, but as a reminder to you that you're creating that. If you want it, great. Super. We're in a good business together. If you don't want it, I'm here to be a nudge. Well, they say a minister's job is to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. So, here I am, nudging. Abracadabra. Keep that in your mind. And, since I know that I create as I speak, let's pray. And I invite you to know with me that this day and this moment and this place, this gathering, is magical. That we collectively can overcome anything. Anything. 
So let's take a moment. Close your eyes if that's comfortable or just off focus. Do what works for you. Use the words that work for you. Jennifer says Kirk is going to use bibbity bobbity boo If that helps you remember that you create as you speak, good deal. The whole point is to remember. Because we are creative. Because we are the children of creation itself. Because creation smiles upon us and works through us and constructs for us and can as easily destruct because we create as we speak. Abracadabra. So this is a magical day. We give ourselves permission to work magic. To transform our lives in every possible, good, wonderful, positive way. Abracadabra. We create as we speak. We remember now how creative we truly are and how blessed. For the universe holds nothing against us but simply continues to say yes to that which we claim for ourselves. Abracadabra. Life is good and getting better. We are coming out of our sleep and awakening to the power within us. And we take that power into the world for good. Today we are blessed and tomorrow even more blessed and the day after that in a continuing upward spiral of blessings and grace and peace. Abracadabra. We create what we speak and gloriously, happily, joyously we let that be so. And so it is. I know you are all going to have a spectacular week. That the world is going to be a better place because you are in it. That you are caught up in that spiral of ever increasing good. And are very much a part of making it happen. Ah. Uh, Oh, we have a closing song. Yes. You can do magic. You can. You know how now. As soon as I'm out of here, I will post um, a JPEG. Download it if you wish. Do what you want with it. Hang it on your wall to help you remember. Get it printed on a piece of parchment and wear it around your neck. It doesn't have to be big. It's a JPEG. You can make it any size you want. Abracadabra. Get out those magic wands and those magic words and do some magic in the world. It needs it. It needs you. You are a blessing. And we let that be so. And so it is. I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. You can tell me about all the magic you've created between now and then. I'm so glad you're in my world.